Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com under the topic of work and energy titled Energy Analysis Number One. All right, so in this one, we've already talked about conservation of energy. We're just going to look at a way of applying it. I'll link a few videos here for you to take a look at up at the top if you have any questions on how to calculate potential energy, the ideas of conservation of energy, and so forth. But here's what the questions look like. This is actually from the wizard level. The other levels are actually uh, just, um, they've only got three positions instead of five or four positions instead of five. So let's go ahead and get started. So if we take a look here, we can see that uh, we have a 100 kilogram ski jumper who starts at rest. We'll get back to that, that's important, at the top of a hill of a certain amount of height. Then we see, and so that's up here at point A. Okay, that's what this A means. Its height at B, so here's B, is, and C, C is at the same height, is uh, this number, 120 in this case, and its height at D is 160. Okay, so that's at D here. And then at E, there at the ground, so that'd be a height of zero. Dotted line here, is usually what we use to indicate our frame of reference, in other words, our zero point. And then um, keep in mind, uh, oh, and so determine the potential energy and kinetic energy values at A, B, C, D, and E. And then it'll say either use G equals this or G equals this, depending on which one your teacher assigned. And then before you start into this, you'll pick one of them. Okay. All right, let's go through this. You uh, actually never need to calculate kinetic energy using one half mv squared. Instead, um, we're going to use uh, conservation of energy, but we will be using potential energy equation. So remember potential energy, gravitational potential energy is mgh, which is the mass measured in kilograms, the uh, acceleration of gravity measured in meters per second squared, which is the same thing as newtons per kilogram, since we're calculating are canceling with kilograms. That's a nice thing to have here. And then we also multiply by H, which is in meters. So it'll give us newtons times meters, which will give us a number in joules. Okay, so for our first one here, we uh, see that we have, first of all, that's the mass for all of them. So the mass will always be 100 for us. Your number, of course, will be a little different. Uh, starts at rest at the top of a Hill and then depending, uh, and so if for our first calculation here, we'll use 360. Okay, and then whichever of these you chose to use, I'm going to use this because it helps our brain to see what's going on. 10 is really easy to multiply by, so we get that idea. 9.8, you can definitely get out a calculator and plug that in if you need to. So 100, 100 times 10 times 360 gives us 360,000 joules. So three, six, zero, 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 zero joules. Then the next key thing we see here is that it is starting at rest. That means its velocity is zero. So if we think about, we don't have to use exactly, if we think about one half mv squared, if v is zero, ke is going to be zero. Okay, now the next important thing is to recognize the total energy here. Total energy. Okay, no one ever uses TE. Let's, uh, uh, mechanical energy is probably what they'll use. Sorry, I wasn't thinking about that ahead of time. So the mechanical energy or the total energy here is 360,000 joules. Okay. Um, so uh, we are assuming mechanical energy conservation, meaning there won't be a friction that will cause this ski jumper to, um, uh, to, to create heat between the skis and the snow. In reality, of course, there is. Some of the energy will be lost to heat, sound, other things like that. Um, but in this case, we're pretending complete mechanical energy conservation. So we can see the concept here. So then if we calculate the potential energy at different spots, so let's calculate it at B and C, we would just be putting 120 in here instead of 360. 
So that means we would get 120,000 because it's times the 100 times the 10 times the now 120. So both of these spots, the potential energy is the same because the height is the same, the mass is the same, and we're still on Earth. So gravity is the same. Okay, but now what about the kinetic energy here? Well, we know that the mechanical energy still has to be 360,000. Well, if the kinetic energy here is 360,000 and 120,000 of it is potential, that leaves 240,000 of it to be kinetic. Same thing here. If 120,000 of the 360,000 is potential, the other 240,000 is kinetic. If you didn't get what we did there, we were just making sure that this number is what we get when we add these two numbers together. Okay? Or we could take this, you could say we're taking this number and subtracting the potential energy to get the kinetic energy. All right, so then we've just got a little bit more here to do. Let's do the last one because that's really easy. At the end, there's no potential energy because they're on the ground. So all the energy will be speed. Hopefully you don't hit the ground at this angle with that much kinetic energy. Ouch! Um, so hopefully this is actually sloped down here like it is in real ski jumps. Um, this would be bad. But we're just doing physics here. Pretend, suspend your disbelief. Pretend she can absorb that with her knees or something. I don't know. Anyways, um, and then so we just got one thing left, and that is to calculate it D, the potential energy. So that'd be 160,000. And if there's 360,000 total and 160,000 of it is potential, that leaves 200,000 to be kinetic. All right, enjoy puzzling through the energy analysis one. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you learned a little bit about conservation of energy, then uh, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. And we'll catch you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.